Hello, students of statics. This is Dr. Dan Baker, and welcome to this example video today looking at how we can use our knowledge about couples and essentially moments that come from forced couples or also concentrated couples and how we can apply that to a two-dimensional problem as we're asked to find the resultant moment about 0.0. Okay, and we're going to do this two different ways just so you can see the differences between those two different ways. And the first way that we're going to take a look at this problem is looking at a vector cross product approach. And that's going to be between the lines of action of F1 and F2. And then additionally, we're going to look at the principle of moments, summing moments around 0.0. Okay. So if we look at uh, approach A, and feel free to pause the video and drop this diagram, noting in the diagram that we have both F1 and F2 proportional to a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And then we have this concentrated couple of 200 Newton millimeters applied around the anchor point with the wall here, 0. 0.0. Now, because both these forces are proportional to 3, 4, 5, it turns out that these are parallel forces. They're equal because they're both 10, 10 Newtons and they're opposite because they're in opposite directions. Okay, so F1 and F2 actually form a force couple that we can resolve into the value of that couple. So another thing that'll be different between my approach in A and my approach in B is basically my approach in A will be to recognize the couple. And my approach in B is just going to be to ignore the couple. And we'll get the same answer for both, okay? So as we look at part A, one of the first decisions we have to make is either are we going to draw an R vector pointing at F1 or pointing at F2. I've decided to start here at point A and draw my R vector from here, from A to B, okay? So R, A, B. And so um, if that is my R, A, B, let me go ahead and write out that position vector, R, A, B as a vector, noting that we're using a Cartesian coordinate system, let's call horizontal X and vertical Y. So as I write that in components, we'll end up with 100 millimeters to the right, so 100 millimeters in the X and then down 60 in the Y, so minus 60, so that's the I hat and the j hat and both of those will be in millimeters okay so if we then set up our overall equation and we say we want to sum our moments at point a using this r vector we can think about the principle of moments here right remember the principle of moments also known as Varignon's theorem really was focusing on the perpendicular components of the r vector and the force vector Okay, so summing most about A, focusing just on F1 and F2 for now. I'll come back to C here in a moment. Also to recognize that with my 3, 4, 5, each one of these uh, vector components, I could write F1 is equal to, let's see here, it's going to be negative 3 fifths of 10, so a negative 6, and a positive 4 fifths of 10, so that's going to be 8. And here with F2, I could say that F2 as a vector has components, again, six in the X, this time negative eight in the Y. Just the flip of the signs also validates that the vectors are in the opposite direction. So just to write out what this step is gonna be here, we're essentially going to take my R, A, B sub X, and I'm gonna cross that into my F, two sub Y as a vector, and I'm going to add to that the other perpendicular pair, which is my R, A, B sub Y. And I'm going to cross that into F2 sub X. Now, keep in mind, the sign on both of these cross products will come from the right-hand rule. And so R, A, B, X is a distance of 100. My force in the Y is 8. Now, notice that I haven't yet worried about signs on these. I just brought them both over as absolute values. Now I take a look and say, well, 
if I'm going from A over to the line of action here of the vertical component, which basically goes down through B, put your fingers along this line, curl them down into B, your thumb should go into the screen, and you end up with a negative value for that first moment term. And then we add to that from the second moment term, this is going to be the vertical distance. So this is going to be 60 millimeters times a force value. Now it's going to be the horizontal of six. And this one, as we slide our fingers down from A to the line of action here, let me go ahead and draw these two components just so we can see them. So this I'm talking about is my F um, two sub X. And then this here would be my F to sub y. So essentially my r vector coming here, curling into this direction, we end up with a positive from the right hand rule. Okay, and so we get a total value from those. You could add that up. We'll do that at the end of the problem. And then additional we need to add in our couple, okay, plus our couple as a vector. And we need to add that in because no matter where you sum moments in this body, O, A, anywhere else, you need to add in that couple. And so this one, we don't have to multiply a force times a distance. It's just a couple. Okay, the distance is already built in. It's pure rotation is another way to think of a couple. Wrapping your fingers around in the direction of the arrowhead, in this direction here, you should get a negative putting your thumb into the screen. And so this ends up coming in as a negative 200 Newton millimeters. No need to multiply times the distance because the distance is built in. And you can see that in the units, right? There's already this millimeter on the inside of those units. So summing up the values here, we had negative 200, we have 360 positive and a negative 800. Bringing those together, we end up with the sum of moments about point A, negative 640 Newton millimeters. And I can go ahead if I want to and write that as a vector by adding in the unit vector, which is in the K hat. Now it's totally fine if you put your negative with the numeric value, if you put it with the K hat, they mean the same thing. Right, so either 640 newton millimeters magnitude in the negative k hat or negative 640 newton millimeters in the k hat. Okay, you can move that negative around anywhere that you want. All right, so next we're going to compute the same thing, this time by summing moments about point O. Okay, and summing moments about point O, we will have to worry about the fact, again, that these forces have components. I'm going to use the same overall approach, which is fundamentally a method of moments. Again, this is eight. This is six from those components. And so I'm really gonna be worrying about my perpendicular Rs with those different forces. I'm gonna zoom out here a touch so hopefully we can maintain seeing that um, diagram above. So this was for part A. For part B, I'm gonna end up with a whole series of terms. I'll number them here. Um, at the end. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is kind of a habit of mine, when I sum moments about point O, I often will add in the couple first. And the reason for that is so I don't forget it. Because there's certainly problems that I get rolling with my R cross Fs and I forget to add in this couple. So negative 200 Newton millimeters. Comes along for the ride, it's an applied couple to that body. Next up, I could come in and look at the horizontal component from O to A, cross into that eight Newton force, and so a distance of 100 millimeters, and that's crossed into eight Newtons. Go ahead and check this for your right-hand rule. Slide curl or three fingers, you should get a positive from that cross product. And then we're going to have with the the horizontal component. Now realize with these forces, remember about the line of action, that we can actually slide these forces anywhere we want the line of action. Slide this force over right above 0, .0 right? So the equivalent force to that six Newton is basically sitting right here above 0, .0, and then that's the easiest point to think about your vertical distance. So the vertical distance of 30, times the force value of six Newtons. Crossing the 30 into the six, you should get a positive value from the right-hand rule. Now taking a look at the components of F2, I have a horizontal distance of 200. And then I'm gonna cross that into a downward vertical F2 sub Y, giving me um, that value there was eight. This is in millimeters. 
And so 200 times 8, and the sign on that from the right-hand rule, slide, curl, or three fingers should be a negative. And then finally, we have F2x. Once again, F2x, you could slide all the way over to right below 0. 0.0. We have a total distance then of only 30 millimeters times that force component, which is equal to 6. Sliding from O down to the line of action of F2x, thumb comes out of the screen. This is positive. All right, so that gives me five different terms. Four of these came from R cross Fs. One of these came from our couple, right? So the sum of our couples and the sum of all of our R cross Fs are the total moment. And adding all these values together, we also end up with the same value here. The sum of moments about 0, 0.0 equal to negative 640 Newton millimeters. And again, if I want to write this as a vector, I could put this in the k hat. So the same answers with fundamentally very different approaches, right? In part A, we recognized the fact that we had a couple and we focused on finding this r vector between the lines of action of the two forces. And with that r vector, we were able to determine the value of this couple. We then added that to the existing concentrated couple that's applied here at point O, finding our overall resultant moment value, or in part O, or excuse me, in part B, summing moments about point O, we actually said, I don't even know, or just we ignored the fact that there's a couple at all. We simply summed our forces. And now while point O probably wasn't the most efficient place to sum forces, quite honestly, point A or point B would have probably been the most efficient ways to sum forces, just like we did in part A, but we still got the same answer. Hopefully this is a good walkthrough of summing moments on a two-dimensional problem. On a three-dimensional problem, it's no different. Your, your R vectors are much more, are more complicated. Your force vectors can be more complicated. And so you can end up with moments in more directions, just like we did previously to summing moments about a point. But the fundamental premise is the same, is that if you want to recognize the fact that you have equal opposite non-collinear forces creating a couple, cool, go with that. If you want to ignore that fact and simply sum your moments, you'll get the same answer either way. Hope you're having a great day.